So here in our next uh, topic, we are looking at other types of equations. And one of the equations are equations involving radicals. And, you know, radical equations are equations with roots. Um, and we mean square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, etc. Fractional roots. <clears throat> there's lots of different, or fractional powers, excuse me. Uh, there's lots of different ways to... Uh, to represent them, but the symbol for your radical is that square root symbol right there, and that's the square root because it has no number in here. Um, that's the default. Um, if it was a different root, like a third root or a fourth root, the number would be written inside or right outside of that radical there. Now, the root is the opposite of a power, and so therefore, uh, you know, when we think about solving and we're doing opposites, <coughs> excuse me, we look at opposite operations. So the opposite of a square root is squaring. The opposite of a third root is cubing, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so what we also want to do, uh, due to the restrictions on what we can take the square root of and the type of answers we get and the way we manipulate the equations, is to check your answers, um, just to make sure. So let's look at just solving a you know very basic square root and uh, one with only a number and only an x underneath the radical. So... What we will do here is we will square both sides. Because if I isolate the radical, that allows me to square it to undo the radical itself. And then I get my solution of x equals 16. So that's very basic. The next type, just still kind of basic because we only have a number on this side, but underneath the radical we have an expression of more than just an x, but the procedure is still the same. As long as we isolate the radical expression by itself on one side, we can then raise it to the appropriate power. In this case, since I have the square root of x plus 2, I square it, and that just eliminates the square root symbol and just leaves me what there is underneath the square root. Subtract 2 and get x is 47. So if I were to check this, I would check 47 plus 2. Does that equal 7? Square root of 49 is 7, so yes, that's a true statement, and that solution checks out. <coughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Bigfoot getting away. All right. <laughs> Might take a second to refocus. My bad. All right, there we go. We are refocused. All right, so, so that's, you know, basic... Not easy, but still kind of what we would consider basic. Now, this next one, um, as you can see, has an expression with an x under the radical and now has an x on the other side. So since I have my radical by itself, I can still square both sides. So this leaves me 3x plus 54 is x squared. Now, being that that is a quadratic equation, um, I have to solve it differently than I would the linear equation. So the quadratic equation means I must get everything on one side of the equation, set it equal to 0, and either solve by factoring, square root method, or quadratic formula. So what I'm going to do is, because I do just prefer my x squared on the left side, I'm just going to interchange sides, which we talked about back in section 1.2. Um, and then I'm going to move the 3x and the 54 over to this other side. 
so I can move the 3x by subtracting it. Okay, and that leaves me x squared minus 3x equals 54. Subtract the 54. Leaves me x squared minus 3x minus 54 is 0. So now I need to factor so I can solve this. <clears throat> so I'm looking for, in this case, since I do have a 1x squared, factors of negative 54 that subtract to give you 3. And the reason being is, again, because that is negative. And so that tells me my signs are different here. And I know if 9 times 6 is 54, 9 times 6 is 3. But since I have negative 3 here, I need to have more negative than I do positive. Then when I solve, I use my zero product property. And I get x is 9 or x is negative 6. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check these solutions. Um, and I go back to the original equation. And I check x is 9. So I have the square root of 3 times 9 plus 54. And I want to know if that's 9. And I get the square root of 81 is 9. So 9 is a good solution. So I usually go down there and say, okay, that one's good. Now let's check negative 6. So the square root of 3 times negative 6 plus 54 is that negative 6. Well, the square root of 36 is not negative 6. The square root of 36 is 6. So that's not a solution. And what we call this, we call this extraneous and it's extraneous because we managed to get this answer based on the way we manipulated the equation but it's a solution that does not check out okay so that's why um, it is kind of important to you know um, check your solutions for these radicals okay you check solutions for other types of equations to make sure your answer is right or wrong but in this case you've got to check just to make sure your solutions are valid all right so let's look here now you know we have the radical isolated and so let me kind of show you possibly a variation of this problem let's say we started with this and what you cannot do is you cannot square this, square that, and square that. It doesn't work that way. Anytime in math as we're solving, we do, you know, manipulations to one side. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. So if I am adding a number to both sides, that's one thing. If I am squaring both sides, that means I multiply what's ever on one side times itself. I don't just distribute a square or a cube. So that is why we need to have the radical by itself on one side before we do anything to it. Okay, so now I can square both sides. And that leaves me with x minus 1. And be careful when you square something because it's x minus 7 times x minus 7. If you just, again, you can't distribute the square. It doesn't work that way. So then what I end up with, if you use your FOIL method, you should get x minus 1 equals x squared minus 14x plus 49. Okay, I'm going to kind of separate this out here. So, 
I am going to again interchange sides because I want my square on the left and I need to get all my X's and numbers on the left side and set it equal to zero. So if I subtract an X, I get X squared minus 15X plus 49 is negative one. Then I add one and I get X squared minus 15X plus 50 is zero. So I, once I get that, now I'm going to factor. So thinking about you know what we've talked about in class, I need two numbers that multiply together to give me 50. They're both the same sign because this is positive. And then they add together to give me negative 15. So that's x minus 10, x minus 5. So my solutions, uh, using my zero product property, x minus 10 is 0, or x minus 5 is 0. So x is 10, or x is 5. So when I go back to check, 10 works, and just for time purposes, I'm going to show you that 5 does not work because the square root of 5 is not, or 4 is not equal to negative 2. So 5 is another extraneous solution. So as you work through these radical equations, you know, they're not easy uh, just because there's so many different uh, moves involved. And then you have to remember factoring. You have to remember how to, you know, what to do with a square equation, uh, things like that. So they, they can be difficult, but they're not impossible. Just take your time. All right, the last type of equation is in example five, or last type of, of radical equation. Now this one, I've written over the exponent, is a fractional exponent. Um, roots can be represented as fractional exponents. Uh, like for a one-half power, that's a, another way to write a square root. Okay, um, One-third power is a cube root. So the denominator tells us whether it's a square root, a cube root, etc. The numerator is a power. So, you know, this we could kind of say that this is the square root of x cubed is what this uh, could be written as. But dealing with fractional exponents, what we can do is we can raise both sides and we raise it to the reciprocal power. So since this is 3 halves, we raise both sides to the 2 thirds power. So by rules of exponents, we multiply our exponents when we raise a power to a power, which gives me 3 halves times 2 thirds, which gives me just x, and that's the goal here. And then if we take 8 to the 2 thirds power, you can either put this into your calculator like that, or the cube root of 8 squared would be 2 squared, which is 4. Because the cube root of 8 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So that's how you can deal with those fractional exponents that do represent radicals. So that's the radical equation, you know, the other types of equations that we're dealing with. And the other ones um, are they are absolute value equations. Let's see if this thing gets in focus any better. Come on now. Work with me. There we go. So the absolute value of a number is a distance that a number is from zero on a number line. That's what it represents. 
um, you have a symbol for absolute value. It's these two lines here. And so, you know, if I asked about, you know, how many points there are whose distance from zero is five, there are two of them. Negative five is five units away from zero, and so is five. So therefore, absolute value equations have two solutions. So the absolute value of x equals 5 will have the two solutions, or the solution set, negative 5 and positive 5. And so when we are solving for absolute value, we will be creating two equations. So if I have the absolute value of some x is some value, okay, let me get this tilt out of the way, then the Whatever's inside the absolute value symbols is going to be equal to the positive value on the right side and the negative value on the right side. So I don't do anything inside the absolute value until I remove the absolute value symbol. So I can't do anything until I apply this rule here to anything inside the absolute value. So since the absolute value is isolated on one side, I can from here create two equations. So 2x minus 5 is 3, or 2x minus 5 is negative 3. Then I solve. So I get x equals 4, or x equals 1. And again, check them. Check them. You know, you, you, anytime you want to know, in math, well, the greatest thing about math, most of the time, you know, um, things can be checked uh, with, without, you know, extreme effort. Sometimes they're difficult, but for something like this, you know, to check it, I'll take 2 times 4 minus 5, and I want to know, does that give me 3? Well, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 5, and the absolute value of 3 is 3, so that's a true statement. And I can check x equals 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, but when we're dealing with absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. So we've made true, two true statements, so our answers are checked and they are correct. Now this next equation here has multiple operations with the absolute value expression. So what I have is 3 times the absolute value of x minus 7 plus 5 is 14. So here's like kind of my uh, caution, error, error alert, error alert, whatever you want to call it. Do not create two equations until you get the absolute value of x minus 7 by itself. So you cannot add or subtract or anything to what's inside the absolute value symbols, but you can to what's on the outside. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 5 from both sides. So I get 3 times the absolute value of x minus 7 is 9. Okay, again, I'm not touching anything inside the absolute value symbols. Then I need to undo the 3 because, see, I can't create two equations until I have my rule set up here. The absolute value of anything equals plus or minus whatever's on the other side. And so see these then are eliminated and I get the absolute value of x minus 7 is 3. So now I create two equations. So x minus 7 is 3 or x minus 7 is negative 3. Then I solve, add 7, x is 10, add 7, x is 4. 
So those are my two solutions. So you did radicals. They have one process. Absolute value has another process. Uh, the key, in, in my opinion, one of many keys, but one, one of the keys I will always stress is to learn and memorize the procedures. Learn your processes. You know, learn situations. Math is all situations. What do I do if I have a linear equation? What do I do if I have a quadratic equation? Radical, absolute value. That's what you need to be uh, really, really memorizing is what do I do in this situation? So uh, hopefully this will help you and uh, we will talk to you soon.